Hey, in this video, we're going to go from a static surface to a dynamic surface. And what this means, we're adding draping characteristics to the sketch. So let's get started. I made this little draping schematic to help point out two important things to keep in mind. First is the fold origin. And the second is the drape direction. Using this schematic will help your folds in your sketches look realistic. And as I'm pointing out here, this formula works on every part of the body. Just make sure that the fold origin, the circle, is located at the highest point of the body or the lowest here under the underarm. Okay, so before we get started, let me just lock down the mannequin. There you go. And first, what we want to do is kind of identify the fold origin and the direction of the drape lines. So what we want to do first is make sure that the edges where the drape lines are going to fall are kind of cleared away. So we have a clean slate. And by the way, the edge cut tool is going to be your best friend in this process. So for simplicity sake, we're just going to do like four lines. We'll want to also highlight that the more lines that we intend to drape with represents the lighter, a lighter fabric. And the less lines or least lines will represent in your sketch a heavier weight material like a fleece or velour. And here you see that we just, we just are simply pushing and pulling each line just in an alternating manner. And already you can see where the material is draping off the chest. The chest is where it's the, the highest point of the body is sticking out. Let's add back in those horizontal edges and kind of gently kind of sweep that forward Let's also add the horizontal edges right here and sweep that back. Sweet. Scoot some of those control points in and around. And there's going to be a little bit of finessing, you know, after you lay down your initial control points and your initial edges. So as you see here, we wanted to sweep back the whole thing to make it look realistic, like there's a little bit of motion going on. Again, we're going to clear away those horizontal edges where we want our draping edges to fall. Take your best friend here, the edge cut tool. For simplicity's sake, again, we're going to just do like four. And we're going to do the same thing. And again, we're going to sketch this in a kind of a sweeping manner. So let's scoot some of that over. There you go. Pull and push, pull and push. Cool. This adds that horizontal line back in or the horizontal edge back in. Scoot that over a little bit. Let's do the same thing down here. Let's scoot that a little bit and Take some of these control points and kind of sweep that back. And you can kind of see that we added some motion, some movement um, in the drawing. There's going to be some slight displacement to your original sketch according to your in relationship to your wireframe, but that's cool. So bringing back the draping schematic. And kind of want to show you that we really didn't deviate much from the uh, the diagram. Sweet. All right, let's do the same thing with the uh, the underarm. Not much to clean up here, so we can go ahead and start 
taking the edge cut tool, finding out the the best anchor point to originate the uh, those folds. So this is the underarm. So it's going to be a little bit more pinching under there. So we're going to add some more um, edges. Again, so just a little bit of finessing um, in between that wire frame. And then we're going to start pushing and pulling. Cool. And then just to make sure that the drawing looks like that there is a, a real arm underneath that. Underneath these folds, we're going to pull those out a little bit and add more volume underneath the surface. Super simple. Well, that's cool. And a little bit of finessing. Making sure the those surfaces are just kissing the wireframe, the stroke lines. All right. Here's the front armpit. Let's do the back. So notice here, there's only one edge that is intersecting the where we're going to put the um, the creases. So we can work with that. So we're going to take the edge tool and we're going to plant anchors right through that horizontal edge line. And again, we're adding more than four points four edges on this one because we know that we need to um, just because it's under the underarm. And then we're just going to use that original horizontal line anyway to there you go, create some, make sure that it looks like there's some volume or looks like that there's an arm underneath that surface. Just a little bit of readjustment. There you go. Nice. So let's let's revisit the overall sketch and just kind of make sure that the surface, the surfaces that were displaced from adding these control points are kind of put back together. And there you go. Not much deviation from that draping schematic. All right, you were probably thinking about, okay, what happens to the wire frame after you do some draping? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna revisit the wire frame at the hem and we will make adjustments according to um, the draped surface or the dynamic surface that we made. We're just gonna simply just readjust that hemline that we made. This also really doesn't take that long once you really get the hang of it. And in some cases, we can probably just use the thicken function as well at the hems, especially after we do create the dynamic surfacing. All right, almost there. Add just a couple more points. Nice. Well, 
one more little bit and we should be done. Look at that. So let's pull up a real life photograph and um, kind of compare 